Welcome back guys to another Zero DTE video and today Ernie's going to be talking about volatility regimes so make sure you stay tuned. If you're interested in becoming a pro trader check out the link in the description where you can find Ernie's education platform. Enjoy guys. When we're in a, a very low volatility regime, that kind of casts a certain flavor to the market. When we're in a high volatility regime, it casts a very different flavor. And you can see that directly in how premium behaves in those final few hours of the zero DTE, even prior to that, because really the session for the zero DTE starts at 6 p.m. the night before. The vast majority of the premium is decaying in that last day. In fact, of all the premium that existed since the birth of that contract eight days ago, in that last Last day, that last 20 hours, that represents almost 55% of the total premium that ever existed, the time premium. And so that's significant. So that's a significant portion of what we're trying to capture, or at least some of it. But it's not our only edge. It's only part of it. We're also directional too. We need to play both. We need to play both the premium decay and try to be in the right place at the right time and allow that to give us the behavior that we seek and like the backstop in order for us to capture additional profit. But we're also directional too. So we have to play that. Okay. So what I was going to show here is that on any given day, as you can see, up or down, about 50-50. This is since the year 2000, daily moves of the S&P. The vast majority of those moves are under half a percent. When we put on a fly with that type of risk to reward, that 70% or one standard deviation of moves that represents the vast majority of the moves under half a percent also represents that move from our entry point to about the edge of the fly. So we're like coincident with that, right? The rest of the moves represents 20% of the, the remainder moves. And they consist of a, a smaller number of of medium-sized moves and some outliers. The extreme outliers, the ones that might go through the fly, they only represent something, God, I think it's maybe 0.1% of the moves. So a lot of people will ask, aren't we worried about it going through the fly? No, not really. And even if it does, by the time it goes through the fly, there's ample opportunity to capture profit. And getting back to the volatility regime, the reason why we choose different width flies is because of the behavior of premium decay relative to the VIX. When low VIX, premium tends to decay much more quickly. Or in other words, that very last day seems to be accelerated, but it really only has any kind of material effect for the first several hours of the market. Because after that time, there's no amount of volatility that would go up or down that's going to either inflate or deflate premium. So all the work is done from maybe three o'clock in the morning until about 12 o'clock or one o'clock in the next afternoon. So all the effect oh, yeah. of premium is either going to inflate it dramatically or deflate it dramatically. After that, time is the final arbiter all the premium has to go to zero in the next two and a half hours. And volatility simply isn't going to affect it. That's why we enter our trades, ideally, anywhere from six o'clock the day before or up to early in the morning, up until about maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock. After that, you start losing some of your edge, some of your opportunity or being able to take advantage of that inflation or deflation of premium and then adjusting your trade to be coincident with that. As I said, in low volatility, it tends to accelerate the premium decay. So in narrower flies, that tends to make them look like they already have advancement in the value of that fly. In general, with low volatility, it costs more to get into a trade. In high volatility, it costs less. There's more gamma risk in low volatility. There's far less gamma risk in high volatility. You're generally in trades for a shorter period of time, and there's less opportunity in low volatility. In high volatility, it's like you have all the time in the world, and your gamma risk is super low, and it feels much more comfortable, and you have more opportunity to make more profit because you can put on much wider flies that have much higher potential value and you can get into them relatively cheaper. This is just the dynamics at play between low volatility and high volatility. So we have to adjust our stance to these trades based on that volatility regime. Every day, there is a change in volatility that is relative to the volatility regime that also has some kind of effect. The beginning of most days, volatility tends to be higher. Most days, not all days, but most days. Does it happen enough that we can 
can't always trade right at the open. No, it's a, a crapshoot. But in general, volatility tends to be a little bit higher in the morning right after the open and then tends to fall off dramatically as you move into noontime, sometimes well before noontime. So that's why a lot of people believe that's our kind of sweet spot opportunity. Somewhere between 9.30 and 10.30 seems to be a sweet spot to enter a trade because with volatility higher, you're going to get on average a relatively cheaper price with better gamma and better risk to reward on your trades and be able to put on wider flies. That's not the way it happens all the time because a lot of the time volatility stays high and stays high right through the day and then doesn't drop off until later in the day, which kind of obfuscates that move. And sometimes it's super low and rises into the noontime, then falls again. That's typical when you have a Fed day. So it's not the same every day. And so you can't trade it the same every day. What you can do is that you can trade ranges that you know work. You'll know that on any given day, I can put on a 10 wide or a 50 wide. And if price is going to go towards me, all of those will profit. You just don't know which one will profit the most. And you don't know which one would profit the most based on the risk to reward or how far out you push that trade. There'll be some sweet spot in there. That sweet spot is constantly changing, but it's a range. So that's why if we know that we need to trade narrower where when there's low volatility, we trade a range of them. Like I said, usually between 10 and 20 wide. And I randomly choose between 10, 15, 20, whatever I'm going to trade, because I don't know. And I also trade a range of risk to reward too, but I start at 10% and go as low as 5%. Because again, I don't know what's the best possible one to do, what's the best possible time. I've traded thousands of trades after the market opens and half hour, an hour and a half after the market opens, I haven't seen in all of those trades any significant difference in my performance or my return. So that leads me to believe that all of the times are valid or I'm just getting lucky and I'm hitting a, a good spot or a consistent spot all the time, which I don't believe that's what's happening. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the like button below. If there's any questions that you might have for Coach Ernie, make sure you leave them in the comment section. Thanks guys.